thank you for the warm welcome and thank you for having me here. Uh, I do want to talk about why urban cities and the way that they are designed matters. And so to do that, I want to take us back through a bit of history. For most of Homo sapiens history, for the last 12,000 years, we have been living in human settlements. In the 4th millennium BC, several so-called urban revolutions occurred, forming the earliest accounts of modern cities. In this day and time, the world population is roughly 50 million. It is now 8 billion. And people are living in more and more dense areas. The reason why that matters is a lot more important than what may seem. Areas becoming increasingly more dense and increasingly larger means that the demand for food, for healthcare, for energy, for water, and so much more is drastic. In turn, that means that the demand that these areas are defined are designed efficiently is also just as great. If that does not happen, stuff like this can occur. Las Vegas, sub suburbia. People are disconnected. They lack connectivity. They live alone. And so the issue of this is far more significant uh, than cul-de-sacs or lack of trees. Areas like these can happen just about anywhere. And so a lot can be learned from American cities, uh, given the fact that America's only been around for 245 years. Uh, it is still in its experimental stage. And a lot can be learned from uh, planned cities as well, new and old. And so in the regards to that, eight aspects come to mind. Compact, densify, connect, mix, transit, cycle, walk, and shift. And so compact and densify basically means that within a certain walking area of yourself, you can find everything you need. Shops, commercial areas, school, parks, anything of the sort. Densify means that people are connected, that they live close to one another, and they live in human settlements. And so, uh, Vilnius does this relatively correct. Uh, when you travel through certain areas, uh, such as Les Dine, uh, you can see that these areas are close to one another and that people live door to door. Following major roads, uh, you, can, you can find commercial shops uh, and other uh, areas. Along other roads, you can find schools and playgrounds. And these areas are also connected to one another. There are bus routes uh, that take you from place to place uh, in relatively short times when people aren't striking. Uh, and, um, and even though they are crowded and there are sometimes reckless drivers, these areas are connected. Connecting and mixing is also a very important part of the way that our cities are planned. And here, Vilnius does not do it quite as well. Connecting means that people in, literally are connected to one another uh, from door to door. And mixing means that you can find everything you need around the corner. It is areas like these, like Kalinana, uh, where I have the biggest issue with. Uh, this is the closest thing that we have to suburbia. Uh, where you have a suburban sprawl. Yes, it is a residential area, it is designed in a way to be like that, but that doesn't constitute the fact that these areas are fairly poorly planned. And in that sense, some of these areas aren't actually planned at all. They, they grow on top of one another, and you have real estates with completely different mindsets uh, next to each other. But living in these areas is an issue of itself because, as mentioned, these are residential. People leave in the morning to go to work and they come back in the evening to sleep. And then the next day, and the next day, and the next day. That's how you end up with traffic. There's also the fact that in these areas there's a lack of mixed use. There, the commercial areas are only along the most major roads. The schools are far and virtually there are no playgrounds around. And so the people who live there, they have nowhere to be, 
no reason to leave the house, decides to go to the city. And so that brings me to public transportation. Transport is obviously very important. Uh, but why is that? Why do we take it for granted? Well, first of all, congestion. Um, public transport takes up far less space than, let's say, 30 people by themselves in a car. But also the fact that they are connected. Uh, and you can have public spaces that are designed for public for transport hubs. This is also economically viable because within these areas, you can, on the way to work or on the way home, you can buy a hot dog or a coffee or a stop by Nikki or anything of the sorts. Then there's also the fact that you can support a lot more um, travelers when you have public transport because not everyone can afford a car and it is incredibly expensive in this day and age to actually afford a car. As you can see on the right, a, the same length of road containing four lanes of uh, cars only had 24,000 capacity per hour, whereas if you include a tram, uh, bike lanes, and only one uh, automobile lane, you had more than twice the capacity of travelers. Vilnius does this relatively correct. They could pay our drivers more so that they shouldn't strike. But there are 122 bus lines, uh, there are 21 uh, trolley lines, and there are six express, express buses that can take you from one end of the city to another relatively simply and relatively quickly. And so for example, uh, I'm trying to get my driver's license, uh, and so after three failed exams, uh, I, I've had to go home by public transport. Uh, and so the ride, the ride there uh, is 15 kilometers by car, uh, 20 minute drive. It takes me an hour to get by public transport. Uh, I have to change three different times, although it's not exactly this uh, map. I have to change three different times and it takes me an hour uh, to drive home by public. Uh, in comparison, I used to live in Prague, uh, a city of 1.3 million for roughly five years. Uh, I also used to live in an area that, in terms of distance from the center, was around the same as Kanyana. So it was isolated. I had no reasons to live there. And I used to travel to my gym, my first ever, which by commute was 40 minutes. I had to take a bus uh, to the metro, then take a metro, a few stops, go to the center, switch metros, and then ride another metro. All in all, 40 minutes riding. But the thing is, is that it's the same distance as the Rikita, 14 kilometers and a 25 minute drive. So why exactly was it that living in Prague, I could travel the same distance 20 minutes shorter? And the reason is because Prague is, in terms of its public transport and its city, very well designed. And on that note, I confess to the fact that I miss Prague very greatly. Uh, that's not to say that Vilnius is bad by any means. It might be unfair to compare a city that is uh, 300 years younger um, to us. But the fact is, is that city, uh, that Prague, was well designed. It grew uh, on top of itself and it considered its citizens' needs first and foremost. And so I think the reason why I like it so much is because in every direction that you go, uh, there is something to see, somewhere to be, something to do. And I don't feel that that's the same here in Vilnius. The other confession is that I didn't care about this issue for quite a while. Uh, this is a game where you're free to design cities uh, any way that you please. Uh, so this is a game where you are free to design cities in any way that you please. Free of money, of any concerns, anything of the sort. But for a long time, it was only that. It was only a game. It wasn't until I moved back uh, here, uh, back to Vilnius, that when I had to be uh, driven to school uh, in the morning, when I had to take public transport home in the afternoon, and that it took me an hour to get home after a failed exam, it wasn't until that I started caring about this, uh, this issue that I realized that why our cities how our cities are designed is incredibly important. 
And this is an issue that I'm generally passionate about. It was not forced upon me. Uh, it does not feel like a, something that I have to do. I have a passion for it. And so, when I see cities that are designed well, there is an image of Tokyo there. Uh, when I see cities that are designed well, I think to myself, why can't villains have the same thing? They manage to happen. Uh, why can't we have it here? And I see it, and you know, I thrive. Uh, you know, I'm 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 happy to see it, uh, and I want it to happen here in Vilnius as well. Uh, and so, coming back uh, as to how we make our cities well designed, we come back to the eight aspects I mentioned earlier. We make our cities more compact. We make them more dense. We connect our people together. We make sure that they walk, we make sure that they take public transport, and that our cities are designed for humans. Thank you.